Yo, YouTube, Ravens Flock, what's going on, man? It's Gabriel to the other fan TV back at you another video. And today's news for today is that the Ravens are still interested or exploring the possibility of trading for that coveted number one wide receiver. Uh, the two names that have been brought up is DeAndre Hopkins and Cortland Sutton. Um, now, I saw this yesterday on the Baltimore Ravens website. I didn't get a chance to talk about it yesterday. So I want to talk about it a little bit today, okay? So it's interesting. You know, the Ravens have been... For a long time, looking for that coveted number one guy, that guy that can take the pressure off a of defense. Um, you know, in the past, you know, we've had, you know, your Derek Masons, your Anquan Bolders, your Steve Smith Seniors, you know. But in this new modern uh, version of the Ravens, we really haven't had that true number one guy. Uh, Hollywood was pretty good for us, but we haven't had that staple, true number one kind of wide receiver, right? Now, this report comes from ESPN. Uh, they saying that the Ravens are still exploring the possibility of DeAndre Hopkins and Cortland Sutton. Now, also, we know that the Ravens have been in contact with Odell Beckham Jr. as well. So, the Ravens are trying to cover the wide receiver position in a multitude of ways, but um, almost isn't good enough. They have to be able to make a move and actually land one of these receivers, all right? It's been too much of, we almost got this guy, we've close for this guy. Um, I just think about DeAndre Hopkins in the past when he was getting traded from Houston. Now, obviously, you could say things like, Houston was a good team at the time, or a decent team at the very least. So it wasn't going to trade DeAndre Hopkins to another good team inside of the AFC. That's fair. But the fact that the Ravens were close and almost got DeAndre Hopkins back then uh, doesn't really make up for not getting anybody at all, period. You know what I mean? So um, and they have a second chance at it. The Cardinals are in the NFC. Uh, the Cardinals and the Ravens have a rapport after the Hollywood Brown trade. Maybe that makes trade negotiations easier. Now, obviously, this is a new GM in Arizona, so it's not exactly the same setup. But still the same team. They know some of the same people. Um, Eric DaCosta has been has not been shy about making moves at wide receiver. Not wide receiver, excuse me. On the defensive side of the ball in terms of trade, you know. Uh, trading for Calais Campbell, we know Calais Campbell is now with the Falcons, but you know, three years ago, trade making that trade for Calais Campbell was a big deal. It was a good move for the Ravens, bringing in a solid veteran leader on that defensive line, allowing the younger guys to develop. That was great. Uh, trading for Marcus Peters, and we know how that trade went, right? First game, he gets a pick six versus the Seattle Seahawks. We love Marcus Peters, all right? Um, maybe the Ravens get a chance to bring Marcus Peters back on a cheaper deal, uh, but he's out there currently in free agency. Um, so, Eric DaCosta hasn't been shy about taking these swings on the defensive side of the ball. We also cannot forget Yannick Ngakwe coming here, for which was really just a rental. I believe he only played like, you know, half the season for the Ravens when he was traded. And he went on to play for, I think he went to the Colts right after that. Or maybe maybe the Raiders, I can't remember exactly. But, point being, he um, Eric DaCosta has not been shy about trying to get pieces on the defensive side of the football. And us, as far as wide receivers, he hasn't been shy about drafting guys in the first round. So when I see this report that the Eric DaCosta or the Ravens in general are interested in trading for a, uh, a wide receiver, I'm happy about it initially. But we cannot allow the list of almost Ravens to continue to grow, all right? Because then you add names, Odell Beckham, uh, DeAndre Hawkins, and Cortland Sutton to that list of almost Ravens, right? DeAndre Hawkins' name will be on there twice, all right? Now, um, I believe the Ravens can make a move like this. I'm not really interested in hearing about uh, Lamar Jackson's contract and salaries holding up because in this article it says that the Ravens are exploring the wide receiver market via trade whether or not Lamar Jackson is the team's quarterback in the future. All right, So that cannot be used as, as an excuse. Also, um, it's true that the Ravens were in on Darius Slay. If Darius Slay happened to be cut by the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, the Ravens were going to make a play for him and possibly land Darius Slay. And Darius Slay is what, uh, I believe, going to be 32 next year uh, going into the season. So I don't want to hear about they can't make a move, they won't make a move. It's about willpower. Will you do it? Right? They're in a position to set up. They're set up to do this. They can get there in many, many different ways. Okay. Um, now, as far as DeAndre Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins does have a salary of like $19 million, which could cause some issues in the trade. But we've seen this before in the past, right? I believe the um, the Texans and the Cowboys just did this, all right? With Brandon Cooks going to Dallas, I believe the Texans are going to pay some of his salary, and, you know, the Cowboys are going to pay the rest. So if DeAndre Hopkins says make $19 million, then the Ravens could pay 
10 million out of the other nine go to Arizona or, you know, something small like that. Maybe they play 12, the other seven go to Arizona. Whatever, however it works, it is a possibility that you can make a deal like that and that can be advantageous for both sides. All right. Um, Odell Beckham, he's out there. He's a, he's a big time receiver, but he is 30. He is coming off of a knee injury, but he fits the profile of the kind of receivers that the Ravens have gone after historically. You know, third contract plus, 30 plus, um, maybe coming off an injury, maybe coming off of being cut. You know, those kind of guys the Ravens love. So Odell Beckham does fit that profile. Now for him, it's obviously his money as well. All right. Um, he's somewhere between four and $19 million. He, he said himself, I never asked for 20, but four is nowhere near enough. Um, the latest report I saw from him, uh, about him, I have to say, was around that $15 million range. No, no, I don't know how true that is. He has to come out on Twitter and refuted that report. So maybe that one is closer to the truth. But look at the wide receiver market, man. Um, these guys were getting around $11 million for the top, top guys. And Odell Beckham, at his best, is better than your Alan Lazars, Jacoby Brissett's, not Jacoby Brissett, I'm sorry, Jacoby Myers, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster's. He is better than those guys, so maybe that's why he's kind of looking for that kind of number. Uh, the Jets still remain the favorite on Odell Beckham, but, you know, the Ravens have reportedly made a push. So that's the lineup to be the almost Raven kind of guy, all right? But the guy I look at is a Cortland Sutton, all right? Cortland Sutton is 6'4", 215, 220 pounds, somewhere around that range. But he has that prototypical wide receiver one kind of build and body. A guy that the Ravens haven't had since, uh, um, I guess you could say Anquan Bolden. Well, Anquan Bolden wasn't 6'4". He played like he was 6'4", but Anquan Bolden was probably most, more closer to 6'1". But, you know, he played big, you know what I mean? So... But anyway, the Ravens haven't had a guy with that kind of physical profile in a long time, point being, all right? Uh, Cortland Sutton, and he's been fairly healthy. Uh, like I said, 27 years old. He's played 17 games in 2021, 15 games last season. So he's been on the field uh, 800 yards last year, um, 700 yards the year before. The thing with Cortland Sutton, I would say that's a little concerning, is that he doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. His career high in touchdowns is six. And that, became, that came in his second year in the league. That was his best season. He had 72 catches that year, uh, 1,100 yards, and six touchdowns. All right. But he is the kind of guy that when you say, hey, look, man, we're trying to get a number one wide receiver in the building. We're trying to get a guy in here that's going to help our quarterback, wherever that may be. I'm hoping this Lamar Jackson um, uh, have a better and more comfortable, you know, when he's reading the defense. Right. A guy that you could say, hey, look, man, it's one on one. Let me throw that up. He can go make a play because, you know, we've seen guys in our own division. You know, uh, T. Higgins can do that. Jamar Chase can do that. Um, George Pickens can do that, you know, as a rookie. Right. Uh, so other teams have these guys that are almost safety blankets for their quarterback along the outside. And the Ravens have Mark Andrews on the inside in the slot. But it's hard asking your tight end to be a number one wide receiver. It's really only worked for the Chiefs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Travis Kelsey is that special. Mahomes is that special. Still getting it to other receivers who might not be as big of names, but they got the uh, they got the scheme and the talent to make it happen. All right. Uh, so as far as the Ravens go, this is almost a must happen, right? Uh, I, I don't have really any expectations. I don't have any hopes for it happening, but it's more about the fact that You've been willing to make this move at, at, um, at cornerback, at D-line, multiple times. It's time to make that same kind of move at wide receiver, right? The Ravens were almost in on Stephon Diggs, almost in on this guy, on that guy. It's actually time for Eric DaCosta to land a star wide receiver. Now, I like most of the things that Eric DaCosta does in the front office. I think that he's a solid GM. Um, in my opinion, he is missing that one key receiver that he's landed via free agency, via trade on his resume. Ozzy had that. Now, they might have been older guys at the time. They might have been, like I said, your Derek Mason, your Anquan Bowden, just these Smith seniors, guys on the back half of their career. But he still managed to land some wide receivers in here um, that could contribute to the team right away. That's why, for me, when I look at these options, right, I would love DeAndre Hawkins. Absolutely love DeAndre Hawkins. I get the salary, and also I get the age. I think Cortland Sutton is the best fit just because of age, talent profile, and he still has more room to grow. Like I said, he's only 27 years old, so he's really entering the prime of his career right now. And for whoever the quarterback may be, once again, hopefully it's Lamar Jackson, uh, Cortland Sutton is the kind of guy that will tremendously help this offense. So, um, 
once again, these reports are just that, they're just reports, they're nothing that's going to be confirmed, set in stone, until a move flashes across your screen and says the Baltimore Ravens have traded for XYZ. But I think it is interesting to talk about, I think it is interesting to bring up, because we've been looking for this kind of guy for a long time. We've been looking for this wide receiver that could help the team. Now, the thing that you could say is that while we wait until our quarterback is in his sixth year to try to get him that help and try to get him that guy when we should have did this right after 2019, and I would agree with you wholeheartedly, right? Because we made the trade for the cornerback during that 2019 season. Why couldn't we make the trade for the wide receiver? You know, so those are valid, valid questions when it comes to this team's overall philosophy throughout their history when it comes to wide receiver. Not just now, not just recently, even when Ozzy was the GM, right? So um, what the Ravens can't do is go into the season saying that they signed Nelson Aguilar and that's enough. Um, I don't think they will do that. I think they will draft a first-round wide receiver. So, in, in my ideal wide receiver room, if I can have, you know, a, a Bateman, then you put in a Hopkins, Odell, or Sutton, one of those three guys, you got your first-round wide receiver, you got Aguilar, and you got, say, Devin DuVernay back there who can still return kicks, punts, and be, you know, your, your, your jack-of-all-trades kind of receiver. That's an ideal wide receiver room to me, right? Now, um... We'll see what happens. What you never know. You never know what could happen, right? You never can predict NFL uh, the off season what could happen. But if the Ravens are serious about still trying to win next season, whether Lamar Jackson is the quarterback or not, they need to revamp and upgrade the wide receiver room. That's all they've been saying throughout the off season. That's all they've been saying since the season ended. We're going to get better at wide receiver. So if your <laughs> if your intention is to do that. Um, and you're not going to have Lamar Jackson as your quarterback, you're going to need as much help as possible at the wide receiver position. Even if Lamar Jackson is your quarterback, he needs more help at the wide receiver position. So these kind of moves will be very, very welcome. I hope that the Ravens can possibly land one of these receivers. And um, if I had to put my money on, if I had to put a stamp on out of from one to three, who's the most likely, I would probably say it's, it's Sutton at the top of the list as the most likely kind of guy. He makes sense. Um, it's a trade that could happen on draft night. Maybe the Ravens trade their third round pick or they scramble up together to get a second round pick and they trade that to Denver. I could see that happening. Um, and I don't believe his salary is too crazy. I haven't looked into his salary, but I know DeAndre Hopkins um, has a lot, has a large salary. So that would take some work in between both sides. That's why I think that's probably number two. Um, maybe even number three and Odell Beckham being number two just because Odell Beckham is a free agent and he might not get the number he's looking for out there. Uh, maybe the Jets will pay him that. Like I said, the Jets have still remained a favorite to get an Odell Beckham. Um, so if I had to say who was the most likely, I think it's Corbin Sutton. Um, but let me know what you think, you guys, uh, on this right here. Do you think the Ravens will land a receiver? Do you think this is not just another in the latest lines of almost Ravens? Will the Ravens finally pull off the big trade, the big sign, and get a wide receiver in here that has some household name value to actually help wherever the quarterback may be next season? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments, man. Let me get out of here. Uh, it's Gabriel, just other fan TV. I'm out.